Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and we are looking super close to having SpaceX's SN4 Starship ready for pressure testing. Loads to talk about with Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 test flight. Intuitive Machines dropped news this week as well, announcing a landing site for the first lunar landing mission has been selected. We're going to explore the amazing new Pocket Rocket app for all of your SpaceX launch needs, and a bunch of other interesting news for the week as well. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Starship updates are coming along so quickly now that all I can really do at this point is just summarize everything that's going on. After my video last week, the main tank segments were still in separate components awaiting to be finalized and stacked. During the week, however, everything has come together very rapidly. Last Sunday, the SN4's lower liquid oxygen tank, bulkhead, and thrust puck structure was flipped to prepare for stacking. This segment is always the most complex component, so work has progressed with this section throughout the week. Later in the week, it has had actually been mounted to the skirt section which has indeed been reused from the folded SN3. We wasn't 100% sure if that would actually be reused or not, but sure enough there it is now stacked making it a bit of a hybrid ship. As we've seen from the last few weeks, much of the work has been done within the assembly building and indoor structures to avoid a lot of that wind in Boca Chica, Texas. Again the quality of the world seems to be continuing to improve over time. The progress really has been astounding. The ship was fully stacked on Friday and we already have road closures appearing from April 20 right through next week so we can expect to see the SN4 rolling down to the launch site in the next few days followed of course by some pressure testing. Obviously after the last few tests we're all eagerly awaiting a successful result here so we can move on to Raptor engine installation, static fire and a flight test. This upcoming week is going to be incredible one way or another. A massive thank you as always to Boca Chica Gal and NASA Spaceflight for capturing all of this footage. The daily updates are just awesome to allow everyone to keep up to date. We haven't just been seeing progress with the SN4 Starship development either. The SN5 is already underway and we were quite shocked to see some of these shots with all three bulkheads for the SN5 being built out. Already we have the top liquid methane tank for the SN5 here underway and there are plenty of ring segments being moved around for other core body structures of the SN5 as well. It's going to be interesting to see just how much progress there has been on the SN5 before the SN4 pressure test actually occurs. Now, a few days ago, Elon Musk sent out a flurry of tweets talking a little more in depth about the SN4. When asked of his opinions for Rocket Lab's mid-air recovery last week, Elon came back saying he has great respect for everyone who gets a rocket to orbit, but at the same time mentioned he's spending crazy amounts of hours on Starship design and production, and that the SN4 is almost done. He went on to say that the SN4 isn't going to be doing any belly flop maneuvers as it won't be getting any flaps. So it's going to be engine only flights for this prototype. Interestingly he mentioned that SpaceX have just redesigned the flap actuator and aerodynamic design which sounds like it's going to be coming for either the SN5 or the SN6 version depending on how we go here I assume with the SN4 test. If you spot any information about this redesign please do share it in the comments of course as we are really wanting to know I guess what all of this exactly will mean. So this is where we are at now and thanks again to Raphael here for assisting me with these incredible diagrams both for the current snapshot of the SN4 as well as the brand new amazing format here for the SN5. Beautiful work mate. If you're not following Raphael on Twitter you are totally missing out on these daily updates. The SN4 Starship diagram is now quite simple. We of course have the nose cone which hasn't changed much over the last week as far as we know. All the sections that make up the liquid methane and liquid oxygen tanks are all stacked with the potential of heading off for pressure tests in a few days. Within the tanks we have the header tank and the downcomer and of course we have the three Raptor engines still sitting by waiting for static fire. The SN5 diagram is getting a little more interesting as well. Along with the three bulkheads we also have the top bulkhead merged with the ring stack as well and by the time this video is out there will more than likely be more updates with the SN5 as well. So as we watch all of these Starship versions progress we need to realize how quickly this has all evolved. Elon Musk and SpaceX are not only building these prototypes but they're building the team of incredible workers and the facilities to churn these prototypes out at a faster and faster rate. As experience grows and full Starship missions come online we will all of a sudden see the ability to send hundreds of tons to cargo to low earth orbit with a fully re usable vehicle. This is going to change the entire industry. It may still seem like a long way off, but a 
as soon as we have some successful prototype flights, you may be surprised at just how quickly this might all happen. Now, in a reply to Toby here, Elon tweeted that they are now up to the 26th Raptor engine, so they already have a good stockpile going on. Keep in mind that the first super heavy booster is going to have upwards of 30 engines or so, so speeding up that production is going to be critical after we have successful suborbital flights of the Starship going on. For an orbital flight, a super heavy booster will certainly be needed. Now, I've had a bunch of comments super critical of various prototype failures as we've seen already, but as Elon says here, what is actually the difficult part of the development is the production. He isn't super worried about early Starship failures as they are always suboptimal prototypes anyway. Most would presumably only ever fly once and then essentially be lawn ornaments if they do survive. So yes, the increased speed and availability of these prototypes being churned out is the real important factor here. All this being said, we have our fingers crossed for a successful pressure test and with any luck we'll be seeing this baby fly real soon. Now I just needed to share a video this week as well by the Twitter channel Orbital Wedge. This is an artistic 3D rendered video of a potential SpaceX Starship doing its initial test flight and belly flop landing. It's very cool to check out some of the amazing work being done in the community here. There is a link to this in the description and also the YouTube video. Now I'm hoping we'll see some more of these because there is certainly some more detail we'd like to see with that belly flop maneuver. It's also worth noting that in the real flight the engine bells will not really really glow like this because the Raptor engines are actively being cooled by the liquid fuel flowing inside the engine bell itself. If we take a look at the Raptor engine test fire footage from last year, we can see here that the engine does not glow at all. This diagram from NASA Spaceflight explains it quite well. The liquid methane is actually fed around the engine bell itself to actively cool it before that fuel is then fed into the combustion chamber. So yes, it's always awesome to see fan work like this and yes, we're all hoping we'll be seeing this in real life as soon as we've had some preliminary short test flights. Now just quickly, the next Falcon 9 Starlink launch has been pushed back and is currently scheduled on April 23rd at 3.16pm Eastern Time, so a bit of a delay there, but not too far away now. Greg Scott, of course, will be capturing incredible shots of the launch, I'm sure, so keep an eye on Greg's Twitter feed there. Now I can't wait to see the Starlink network become operational. The next launch of 60 satellites will make a total now of 420 satellites launched by SpaceX. Hopefully we'll see a drone ship landing on, of course I still love you especially after the last few missed landing opportunities. This is the booster's fourth flight, having previously launched Crew Dragon's Demo-1 mission and Radar Sat from 2019, and also the Starlink 3 mission at the end of January this year. Now, if you would like to know more about Starlink in general, I've got a video here that explains this network in a lot more detail. While you're here, of course, please do consider subscribing. There's loads more news coming with Starship and Crew Dragon developments as well. I'd love to share all that with you. Now for those of you that have been watching my channel for quite some time, you'll have seen plenty of examples of me using the terrific work here by Kimmy to demonstrate various things like Starship vs Falcon 9 sizes and various animations. This community is just amazing at creating this impressive stuff. Now over the last few weeks we've seen things jump to a whole new level. A bunch of us have been playing around with this new Pocket Rocket app which is just blowing my mind. This is an app designed to make sure you never miss another SpaceX launch. It's an unofficial app made by a few indie developers and lovers of the SpaceX community and it lets you see all of the past, upcoming and future launches in detail as well as see a live countdown of every future launch. You can even jump right to live streams of launches directly from the app as well so you never have to frantically search around trying to figure out when the stream has started. This is one of the things that really makes this app special though, just for the total beauty of it. You can see all of SpaceX's rockets modelled in 3D and even more incredible with augmented reality. And yep, these models here are of course created by Kimi, which again will look quite familiar to you if you've watched my content for a while now. Just incredible all the detail in these models, like you can quite literally see all of SpaceX's active vehicles such as the Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy, uh, Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon vessels, and even vehicles that we're following the development of closely like the Starship and the Super Heavy. You can quite 
might literally take this thing outside and see the full one-to-one -one scale of these beasts. This really puts the dimensions of these monsters into perspective. For me, this is the very first app with any sort of augmented reality feature that I've ever really loved. So you've got to check this thing out. Now, just to be clear, this is not a paid ad. I just legitimately love what the team are doing here, and I think it's worth all the support we can all give. It's only $3.99 US on the iOS App Store, and with that comes all the core features and helpful reminder notifications on the days of SpaceX launches. There's also some added options for an extra dollar a month or ten dollars a year where you can also get notified by the development team who will be monitoring and sending out manually written updates and reminders leading up to every SpaceX liftoff. That covers off on all those issues like unexpected weather delays and sudden aborts and whatnot so yes there is a lot of manual work in sending out those notifications so well worth it if you don't want to jump into the live stream just to see that it's been delayed another day. Now if you're a big fan of the app there's also high level tiers as well which will give you a few cool perks like custom UI. They can even inscribe your name onto their model so you can see it in the rockets in augmented reality. So yes, we've been having loads of fun with this. If you want to check that out, head to pocketrocket.app and you'll be sent directly to the App Store to grab a copy for iPhone with iPad support as well coming very soon. Now it isn't available at this stage for Android, but this version is the ultimate testing ground for that. If we can all make this incredible work a success, there is no way that an Android version won't be on the cards. Of course, if you're interested in further the development and progress going on there follow the team on twitter here on screen links to all of that awesomeness is in the description great work guys this is super impressive stuff i can't wait to see future versions of it coming out now some exciting news for Virgin Orbit, with them announcing they've been awarded a contract for the US Air Force Space Test Program. This mission will aim to deploy test vessels in low Earth orbit to test out a number of technologies needed for future space architecture. Just last weekend, Virgin Orbit completed this dress rehearsal, demonstrating the ability to fly to altitude and prepare to launch the rocket housed under the wing. They didn't launch the rocket, of course, as this was a test to check out most other systems, but this demonstration went very well well, and it's going to help prove the systems are ready for the real launch. That should be occurring late in the year, currently rumoured to be around October or November if everything goes well. Virgin Orbit doesn't seem to get a lot of airtime, but I find these launch options super fascinating. Similar, I guess, to new technology being developed by Rocket Lab, the small satellite market is super important, and smaller dedicated rockets make a lot more sense in a number of situations. Now, rather than the conventional approach of launching from the ground, Virgin Orbit plans to launch the them from a starting altitude around 35,000 feet or around 10,600 meters on the aircraft. Now, for comparison, the Falcon 9 doesn't reach that altitude in a launch for around 70 seconds or so into the flight, and by that time, around half of the fuel in the booster is depleted, and the atmosphere is already quite thin in comparison with sea level, around one third of the atmospheric pressure or so. A rocket launched at this altitude and also cruising in the correct direction is already off to a great start. That philosophy of course is shared with Virgin Galactic which uses that similar air launch for the Spaceship 2 missions. So yes, in the real mission the Launcher 1 rocket will decouple, drop and fire its engines from under the wing of the massive 747. I do hope we get to see some great high resolution footage of that because that is going to be something to see. Mid last year they did do a drop test here to ensure all would work well in that regard. During this more recent test though, they filled the Launcher 1 with liquid nitrogen to simulate that similar cryogenic temperature as it would have when fueled with liquid oxygen fuel in the real launch. In this test, the modified 747 flew out to the test location and completed this pull-up maneuver that will be done as the rocket is dropped to fire up. So yes, another successful test there. Congratulations to Virgin Orbit and we hope to see the real launch later in the year. Some great news as well early in the week with Intuitive Machines dropping some news announcing that under NASA's commercial Lunar Payload Services program, a landing site for the first lunar landing mission has been selected. Now this is an interesting concept and it's essentially inherited a lot of its systems from NASA's Project Morpheus and this mission is going to be super interesting. First of all, the Intuitive Machines mission will be launched with a Falcon 9 rocket which is currently scheduled around October of this year. 
Once in orbit, the vessel will take a six day transit to the moon and it's going to be targeting a landing location with great sunlight exposure. As mentioned by Intuitive Machines president and CEO, this kind of lunar landing assessment hasn't been done since the 1972 Apollo mission. So it's great to see all of this innovation going on in preparation to get boots back on the surface of the moon. It's going to be super interesting to learn more about this mission as it evolves. And we can't wait to see this baby fly later in the year. Now, just quickly, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are all quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much bigger. If you like what I do and you'd like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included roles in Discord. You can check out some more exclusive patron-only content, and you can also have your name listed right here like these other incredible people. You are all quite literally changing my world here. Thank you very much for your support. Support. Of course, not everyone can donate in this way, but regardless, you guys all simply watching and interacting with these videos matters. Your subscriptions matter, and by watching and supporting all of this and checking out these topics with family and friends, you are helping to educate those around you, and you're helping to drive the global passion to make all of these dreams of colonizing other worlds a reality. A massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would love to be part of it, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today we have my video last week talking about the final Cargo Dragon 1 mission, Starship SN4 development and awesome new SpaceX footage. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.